Hey guys, welcome to another episode. This time I'm going to be talking about 10 projects to learn the client side. I think a lot of times we understand we need to do projects to get better at our programming skills, but a lot of times it might be a little unclear as to which programs we should make or what kind of projects we should do in what order as kind of stepping stones to get to the next level. So I've taken the approach of starting at the most basic all the way up to the kind of projects you should be able to do if you want to get a job as in maybe a junior software engineer. So without further ado, let's get started. Now if you do find anything interesting here, feel free to drop a like, subscribe for more content like this, and uh, if you have any thoughts about the video, just uh, let me know in the comments. So. The first project is an HTML project. And so if you already are fairly competent with general HTML, you can skip this. But the idea is to build just a simple resume. And the content is a lot less important than the actual structure. And so you're just learning how to put the right things where you want them. You should also be using different tags. So you can see you might put in headers, paragraphs, ordered lists, unordered lists, all of that. And just kind of understanding how the flow of HTML works. A big part of that is understanding DOM hierarchy. And that's the document element model. But essentially, it just means that things go inside other things. And so understanding how things get placed where is kind of the first step to learning the client side. Now, after you understand that you can put things in random places, that gets boring pretty quickly. And you want to make things look good. You want it to be pleasing to look at. And so for styling, I think one good project to do with that is just create a fake survey form. And for this, you're just going to make things display differently than they would by default. And so instead of just taking a generic input field, you might change the border radius and you're going to change the margins and you're just going to dress it up a little bit. So you can begin to build pages that are just a lot more enjoyable to look at. I think a good way to gather inspiration for this is take an existing site and just copy that because right now it's just about learning. And so you're allowed to steal from everywhere if that helps you learn things. So I put Google, Reddit, etc. And if you don't know how to do something, you can inspect on your browser and see how the styling is done. And so that can be a good way to just learn how to use some of these cool tools. And I will note, at this stage, it doesn't need to actually be a functioning form that gets submitted to somewhere. It should just be something that you can see. You can still enter information in, but you don't have to worry about it working at this point. But either way, you're going to want to have a common theme throughout the site. And so that's just going to hopefully get you in the mode of using good styling practices so that you can reuse snippets of styling in different areas. Now, ideally, you're also then going to learn to work with images and graphics like SVGs to make some cool effects that look a lot more difficult than they actually are. And at this point, it's probably also smart to start working with media queries and making your site mobile friendly so that when you shrink it down, everything resizes and repositions so it still looks good. And if you end up actually deploying it anywhere, then it'll be also nice to kind of pull it up on your phone and show your friends and family. It also might be a good idea at this point to introduce SCSS or SAS. And that's basically a tool that allows you to write styling faster and it gets turned into CSS. Next would be starter projects for learning JavaScript. Now, the first one I put here is a signup form. And this is going to allow you to learn about how JavaScript interacts with the DOM. You're also going to learn about basic types like numbers and strings. And so if you're gathering an age, 
then you can work with numbers and strings for maybe a name and you might also start working with dates and you'll just kind of get an understanding of the different data types in the JavaScript language. You can also then add basic error handling and start to understand how things don't always go in the exact order that you'd like them to. Sometimes things break and you're going to need to know how to resolve those problems. And so the idea behind it is to add basic validation. So when someone fills out the form and they press sign up, you might check that the confirmed password is the same as password and that the password is at least a certain length. You might also check that the birth date works correctly and whatever you want to do, you can play around with it. But it's also just a really good thing to do because depending on what kind of job you get, form validation I found is just never that fun. And if you learn early how to handle it, it makes it mm, less of a pain in the ass. The next thing on the list I put was a BMI calculator. And it doesn't actually have to be specifically a BMI calculator, just some kind of calculator where what you're essentially doing is turning business logic into code. And what I mean by that is a lot of times in any programming job, they're gonna tell you, we need this to be accomplished and it should look like that. And apart from that, here you go. You have free reign to solve that problem. In this case, you know how BMI is calculated. You can look that up on Google. And then from there, you might take this or just Google, find another example that you want to copy, but you're responsible for implementing it. And what's good is, and I'll have a few projects throughout this list where it's trying to combine all of your prior skills. And so it's putting things where you want them to be, making it look good, and then also form validation and things like that. What's also new about this is you're gonna re-render information. And so it's not just about checking things on the JavaScript side, but then making sure you understand how to update the DOM. And at this point, if you haven't, you could probably start creating things like a GitHub account and learning about how that works. Because especially if you're looking into JavaScript and software developing as a career, you're just going to want to have a GitHub account and understand how Git works. The next project I put was a simple quiz. And the idea behind this is you're getting client side data with a JSON object. And you're just going to create different questions as objects based on the question type that you set up. However you want, you render each of the questions differently. And so you might have, some questions that are A, B, C, D. You have other questions that might be fill in the blank and they have to use an input field. But it's a good exercise in understanding how to work with data. Also, what you're going to do is learn how to not just make a calculation and do something with it right away, but you might be saving the data. And so as someone fills out the questions, you're keeping a tally of whether they're right or wrong. And then at the end, you can show their results. Next, the intermediate plus JavaScript. And so this is kind of projects where once you've gotten comfortable with the basics of the language, where we can go from there. And the first thing on the list is a to-do list, which is the most cliche, but still a cliche for a good reason project. And it's a lot of times the kind of project that's associated with learning a new framework. And so that's going to be something like React, Vue, Angular. But the reason behind that is you're rendering and re-rendering to match a specific state. And what I mean by that is you'll have the state of the data that it's in. And so in our picture here, you can see that the state right now is that you have four different items, tasks on the to-do list and 
those first two are checked and the bottom two are not. And that's the state of the application now. But if someone clicks on the react.js, the state of that application changes. Now you're going to have three things that are checked and one that isn't. And as soon as that changes on the data side, then you want to be able to handle that and reflect those changes on the page. And it's a pattern that is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And I think it's a big part of learning the modern approach to the front end. And you don't need to use a framework for this if you're not comfortable yet and you really want to make sure that you understand vanilla JavaScript, feel free to do it aside from a framework. Also at this point, it's probably good to start understanding how build processes work. And so using new JavaScript and with something like Webpack, transpiling that into JavaScript that's going to be safe on more browsers or on older browsers. And of course, if you feel like you should understand that now, but don't yet, I do have a video on that, that if I remember, I will link in the, uh, on one of the YouTube cards. So next is a client side blog. And I put this on the list because I did this when I was first learning react and when I very first started, there were so many things that I thought I knew and I just didn't. And doing this project just opened my eyes because I started to see the big picture of how data flowed. And so this doesn't require any kind of backend. It's essentially the idea that you're going to have different views. And so one to write a post, one to list all the different posts, and you might click on it and it shows you the view of a single post. And so you're taking a lot of those principles that you learned when you built the to-do list and you're just taking it to the next level. Especially when it comes to to-do lists, there are tons of tutorials on that. And so you might follow a tutorial for that. But I think when it comes to something like this, it's a good idea to try and do it on your own because you're just going to run into problems with how the data gets stored where what component is holding what information. And so what this is in the end going to do is just make sure that you know what you're doing. And yeah, like I kind of got at, you want to just get very comfortable managing client side data. The next on the list here is a memory game. And this is a good one because you're going to make sure that again, more data management and that really is something that just is a part of the front end now. And every project past the basic stuff is generally going to have that as a requirement. What this adds is kind of some of the extras insights. So like animations, maybe the cards flip over and you start to learn about how you can take something from a basic idea to just a really cool interface that people are excited to play around with. And again, this is another one of those projects that's sort of the culmination of previous projects. And now this is the final number 10 project, and it is a Pokedex, which might sound extremely weird or nerdy, but there's a good reason for it. And that's Ajax calls and making network requests, which are going to make sure that you understand how asynchronous code works in that you make a call and you still do whatever you're doing on the main thread. But as soon as the network responds with the result for your search for Pikachu, then you have to re-render and you have to handle some stuff. And now the reason I say Pokedex and not just some other random Ajax example is that there's a really good Pokemon API that's publicly accessible for you to use. Uh, I know I have I have a video that I will also link where I cover a basic one. I think if I remember right, I did it in React, but it allows you to start practicing network calls, which is a big, big part of working on the front end. And once you get comfortable with all the other projects that I've laid out, and then you add Ajax calls, I think you're fully ready to get a junior front end engineer position. 
another thing you could do is if you're already comfortable with Ajax calls, maybe you followed a different tutorial and you're doing this now, is you could learn about PWAs, uh, progressive web apps. And those are a series of patterns that are used for modern apps to do some cool things like working when you lose network connection. And so maybe you've already searched Charizard and Pikachu and now you're out of Wi-Fi or out of no data connection. And then you're able to still search Pikachu and Charizard again because those requests were already cached. And yeah, like I said, at this point, you're ready to be a junior dev. And I think that's an exciting moment. And maybe also scary because whether or not you think you are, you are. And that's just the beginning of imposter syndrome. But that's a video for a whole other day. So what are my final thoughts? Achieving web proficiency. So learning the client side can feel daunting. I have been through it. It's not the thing that you're going to learn overnight and you just can't tutorial yourself there. What I mean by that is tutorials are great. I wouldn't have made this channel if I didn't think they were. But at the same time, there's a great value in making mistakes and having to learn how to find solutions to problems. And that's why I made this list is because I think a big part of the process is using your own gumption and making your own projects. Like I said, it requires making mistakes and learning to solve problems, but it is rewarding. And there's something that's so much more fulfilling about doing a project, even if it wasn't your idea, but finishing a project where you Googled things to help you, but you weren't just copying somebody else's code. And it's it still feels cool to follow a tutorial, get done, and all the code works. But there's something extra nice about building it your own way, even if it could have been done better. It's still an important part of the learning process. And it's also important to note, this isn't the end point. You're not done. From here, you get to branch off into all sorts of things that are more specific to your interests. Maybe you're interested in the HTML canvas and you want to make a drawing app, which wouldn't be too difficult, especially if you've already gotten the hang of learning how to learn JavaScript. Or maybe it has to do with video chat. But nevertheless, after you've gone through all of these, hopefully, even though there's so much more to learn, you feel like you understand how to learn and it's not as much of a daunting, scary process as it is a fun process where you get to say, I'm really interested in that. And you figure out that you actually can learn it. It's not impossible and it's not cryptic anymore. It's just a matter of putting the time and effort into figuring it out. And yeah, that's it. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you found it useful. If you think there were any cool projects that I should have put on the list or any projects that maybe really helped your learning, feel free to put them in the comments. I would love to hear it. Love any feedback you have. And yeah, like I said before, likes, comments, subscriptions, all are gonna help grow the channel. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.